we're looking at the third big drop for bitcoin in just the last two weeks here and some of the situations here may be starting to change, but I still think that people are blowing all of this out of perspective. And I want to cover all of that with you in today's YouTube video right here. So as you're coming in, do me a favor and smash up the likes because we have been on point with all of our analysis lately. Obviously, uh, we didn't quite get the breakout that we were looking for uh, on these two peaks here. But the key thing is that we have been finding support exactly where we would expect it. And one of the biggest points that I think is just completely flying over everyone's head is that now is exactly where we have all of the support. See, when you make a big move up, you're at a really big risk of reversing it if you fall down quickly but if you can sustain those first kind of three days those first four or five days after a big pump and it depends on the size of the pump but if you can sustain the first little bit after that pump that's when the support starts hitting and when we actually see it like on the hourly time frame if i show you the ema ribbon um you know when we're rapidly rapidly rising up we're not really finding any support but as soon as we start correcting look we've got this ema ribbon starting to help us we didn't quite make use of it here but this next big move up look how far away we are from the ema ribbon but as soon as we start going sideways as soon as we start correcting bam we launch up again again here bam we launch up again um you know so we see this on the really short time frames we see it on the larger time frames here is uh, the, the same view on the four hour time frame right here we shoot up we're nowhere near support all this time but then we start to pull back we start to correct and that's how uh you know the trend is able to sustain itself a little bit higher and that's exactly what we're starting to see on these larger time frames now so um you know again I, I feel like the sentiment is really souring here and rightfully so i mean if we look at the uh um the four flies dashboard as well we're going to start seeing some quite interesting data fear and greed index pulling back massively that's one of the first things i do want to talk to you about long and short ratio is definitely changing changing a lot this is starting to get a little bit concerning as well we'll talk about that in just a moment uh, but with the fear and greed ratio dropping quite a bit um you know this is really showing us uh you know where sentiment is going right now where you know to be honest yeah these last few days have been pretty brutal for bitcoin especially uh you know when you consider what the real volatility has actually been in this market right like overall um you know over these last two weeks we haven't seen big moves and we certainly haven't seen them continued right so this kind of three-day sell-off uh has understandably started to scare a lot of people but um you know for me the only thing i'm seeing is that we are falling back into areas where we are expecting phenomenal support and that is really one of the first big notes that i have to raise with you guys in this youtube video um you know we, we are just now in the area that we were waiting for so um you know it's not where i want to be particularly bearish but and this is a big but we're not responding with the same strength that we were carrying previously. And that is understandably where, uh, you know, things are starting to get a little bit more concerning for the short term. And I want to show you why. So, um, you know, one of the things I spoke to you about in the recent videos here is that, um, you know, when, when we set tops, typically we, you know, hit the top and then very quickly drop back down, right? I mean, look at how how long we were actually trading here, um, you know, when Bitcoin broke up into this range, probably not even for a whole day. Um, you know, again, when we set, uh, you know, tops, just just look at it. I mean, it's a, it's a quick thing. You don't really spend much time there. Um, even on this occasion here where it was a little bit slower, you know, this still all, um, you know, pretty much just lasted four and a half days um you know you look at any top it's generally always the same picture you get up there and then you're down pretty quickly and you know so the point i was making is that you know like now we've been at this top for quite some time and it's pretty clear that we've just been trading sideways right for now 16 days roughly so um an incredibly long period of time that we've just been holding this price area at resistance you know i think that um you know th this is this is really important you know if, if you're just kind of like consolidating at a resistance level then you know typically with quite a high level of certainty that uh, that resistance level isn't very strong anymore and uh, I, i've given you this analysis so many times on this youtube channel if you've been with me since uh fucking 2020 uh yeah 2020 you know, I gave you guys the exact same analysis when uh, the market was right here, uh, you know, at $20,000, just flat. Um, you know, we were just consolidating here too, you know, and uh, and I was warning you guys about the same thing. I mean, you know, if you rally up to resistance and yeah, you get your rejection, but then you're right back there. This is a really strong indication that the resistance isn't serving as resistance. It's not rejecting us um you know and and you can kind of read between the lines there and start to discern that actually yeah you know if this market isn't getting rejected at a resistance level that can be an indication that we're about to shoot higher actually off the back of this i traded this move i don't want to trade this move but i traded this move for a huge like 360 percent profit um you know by the way it's trades like that that really just serve you very well i was speaking to 
uh, one of our members in VIP who took our lifetime package back when we used to offer that lucky fucking guy. And, uh, and, and he told me that he's just turned, um, you know, in the last four months, something crazy, like $2,000 into 8,700, um, you know, which is more than a four times gain. And, you know, it comes from the small profits that you compound, but these big home runs, they really pay off and they are what really blow up your account, you know, like the big long that I'm still in right now. Um, you know, and I think that is really, really important to be keeping in mind. Of course, if you guys want to be trading on the same platforms that I'm using, then check out the links in the description down below. You're getting over $100,000 in bonuses. And one of the most compelling offers is going to be Bing X purely because there's no KYC required, which means no pictures of yourself or your ID. Great for people that are privacy focused, but much more importantly than that, you have access to all of these traditional finance markets. You have actual stocks that you can trade with Bitcoin. Uh, you don't actually need to deposit dollars or pounds or euros. Um, you know, you can trade it with Bitcoin, with leverage, Forex, indices, commodities. There's so many options here for you. Well worth checking out. Buy bit. Uh, you know, of course, you already know the deal. This is this is the best of the best. Uh, and depending on what you deposit and trade with, they will give you up to thirty thousand dollars of additional trading capital, uh, which is absolutely huge. Uh, well, well worth checking out uh, because that is a big, big extra bonus to be getting. Um, you know, to just help you uh, trade and, and basically make your profits even faster. So very well worth checking out here um you know and and this is my point is that it's all about you know like you you you're, you're you know your goal if you're a sensible trader in my experience at least is to aim for these kind of sustainable 10 20 30 40 50 percent profits you know the things that you can hit pretty easily you know just uh you know bump and run kind of patterns um you know but then you know sometimes you're going to hit the home runs too and these are the things that can really blow up your account and um you know it, it's what made a big difference for me this year as well with this huge long trade that i've been in but um we'll talk about that a little bit later what I want to focus on is the kind of weakness here because along the same lines that I was talking about, you know, like where we're consolidating at resistance, that could be a sign that we're actually going to, um, you know, break the resistance. It's the same thing as support, right? And uh, I mean, we, we've spent a lot of time, you know, testing this support area here. Uh, and this is the longest one. Um, you know, every time that we've actually come back to this area since we stopped consolidating here, like see up here, we were, we came up and then we consolidated sideways and then we shot up. Um, ever since this point, uh, you know, from from here, you know, basically, yeah, for the last 14 days, every time we came down here, um, we didn't really close a four hour candle in this box. I mean, you know, there were some exceptions, but, you know, we very quickly saved it over here. And, you know, whatever we closed one four hour candle, nothing crazy. Um, you know, here we are, we are consolidating. I mean, here we're not finding the strength to bounce up. And that is definitely where this is starting to get a little bit more concerning. Because again, if you're trying to like read between the lines, that's showing you that actually actually you know, an area that should be responding, uh, you know, to the market pretty well, that the market should be responding to pretty well, you know, with the, whether it's the four hour EMA, I'm, I'm sorry, Ichimoku cloud, where it's the daily EMA ribbon, which is, yeah, basically right here as well. Um, you know, we should really be expecting a lot of support here and we're not getting it. So, uh, you know, that is definitely some cause for concern. And at the very same time, you know, Binance retail traders are uh, really building up their long positions. I want to see if this data confirms the same thing. I'm not sure if this is actually actually yeah let me just go ahead and reload this chart uh, and we'll just come back here for a second. I want to see what the actual longs and shorts are looking like, um, you know, but obviously if we're starting to build up some more longs here, um, you know, for retail traders, that could be a sign that, you know, we are looking at some sort of kind of temporary drop. And, and that's exactly what we've seen so many times before. So, um, you know, it wouldn't be particularly out of the ordinary and it also wouldn't be concerning because, you know, this cloud stretches down so low down to my exact next area of support that I've been talking to you about for a very long time. Um, you know, I've been telling you guys that if we lose this kind of 29, 30, EK area, um, you know, 28.6 is really good support. This is where Bitcoin was finding a lot of resistance previously. Um, and we didn't quite, you know, use it as support very much yet. So just imagine if there's a lot of longs that have kind of been built up over here, um, you know, we kind of stopped them out, uh, you know, find some support off an obvious fucking support level, uh, and then continue on higher. Would that be you know, typical of Bitcoin? I certainly think so. It, it's basically what I expected to happen here, um, you know, and, and it looks like we might just be doing that, uh, you know, a month or two later, uh, you know, and that's still completely fine because, you know, the, the the road to, you know, high price levels is always going to be, uh, you know, paved with, uh, with corrections, I guess. That was a weird way to, uh, to, to, to make a, a reference to that. Um, saying, but uh, but I think you got my point. And if we just take a look at the Bitcoin chart here, uh, this is exo charts again. This is way more complicated than the kind of analysis we share here. But uh, fuck it, I wanna I wanna talk about it, so I'm doing that. 
um yeah and we're we're actually yeah i mean we are seeing longs for sure um you know this this line here shows like if the line is trending down that shows that we're, we're getting shorts if the line is trending up that shows we're getting more longs that's a simple way to view it and um you know we're, we're certainly seeing some more longs pile up now uh but nothing crazy you know one thing that is very clear is that overall throughout this entire range and, and this is the point that i made with you guys a few days ago throughout this entire range um you know bitcoin has been slowly trending up while lots of shorts have been coming on in this market so uh you know and we already knew this we you know, i mean i was talking to you about this with the with the long and short ratio data um you know basically in every single video and, and you know it's only in these last few days that you know this picture has started to shift a little bit but you know overall it's extremely clear that uh people have just been shorting the fucking shit out of this trend um you know since we got up into this range and you know again it's not working right so if you're seeing all of these people piling on positions and they've already the thing you got to consider right and we, we really have to like this is why ha understanding the basics of the markets are so important um so many people don't and that's where they go wrong and that's how people like me can make money off them um you know if you really understand the mechanics right put it this way if we're up in this price range in the 30s and you know a lot of people have kind of built up their shorts um they've already sold right like when you're selling you're pushing the order book down you're pushing the price down but if you've already sold and you don't really want to put more capital into that position then you don't have any more buttons to press other than the green button you know and that's a really important point um it, it should be very concerning to bears i think if um you know if, if you're seeing a lot of shorts pile up in the market but the price doesn't move because you've already played your card you know that's my point that i'm making you've got one card and you've played it and nothing has happened and uh and, and that's basically what we're starting to see here you know I'm, I'm just looking at the data i'm not saying that that you know that that we're gonna get a massive short squeeze but fuck me we definitely have the setup for it you know even if it's a bit of a roundabout way to get there where you know we have to drop down here and then do it um you know we've still got the setup for it and uh and, and i think that is well worth keeping in mind at this stage when you know i mean i'm just seeing everybody else being bearish and you know me right like i'm not here to fucking get in a circle and you know just agree with everybody and pat each other on the back that's not what i'm here for that's not the kind of trader analyst i am um you know quite on the contrary actually if everybody's telling me one thing about the market um and i really do mean if everyone is telling me one thing about the market and it is starting to feel that way a little bit more uh then i'm going to take a step back and i'm going to exercise a little bit more caution it seems a little bit more fashionable now to say that bitcoin might drop and I mean, again, you know, there's very good reason for it, considering that we're not really getting a good reaction. We kind of are, uh, you know, just over these last few minutes while I've been talking to you here, um, you know, but uh, but if it doesn't really develop into anything else, then yeah, you know, I am going to have to expect that this support level collapses because we've tested it so many times now. And, you know, this is the weakest test of it so far, you know, where we haven't responded with as much strength as we did previously. So certainly some calls for concern there, and I'm not trying to brush that off, um, you know, but at the very same time if we do just look at how much more support lies here for bitcoin it's just not you know the kind of place where i'm going to be too bearish right now um because there's a lot that's going in bitcoin's favor you know i mean we've had a beautiful correction uh directly after another beautiful correction you know which came after another really beautiful correction so uh you know i mean the market's moving pretty healthy and you know if a support level collapses so what you know that's what i say there's another support level right here uh you know and all of these longs that have started to build up in these last few days they're just going to get fucked and then the price would probably um you know continue moving up if we're going to keep with this trend right here and that's definitely what i'm seeing as a possibility now let's be a little bit more optimistic um if bitcoin does continue this little pump that we've started since i started recording this video um we need to see uh that we're reclaiming some of our key levels right so you know i mean it, it's kind of hard to say because we are mostly just in a parallel channel you know if i kind of draw this for you it's definitely starting to look a little bit like this so you know the midpoint 30.6 that's actually exactly where i had my line drawn um just a second ago if i go ahead and yeah look at that it's at the exact same area um you know 30.6 the midpoint of this parallel channel uh you know there is certainly something to be said about that and the importance of it so um you know whatever we we just have to overcome some of these levels there's going to be some resistance to push through but uh you know if we start getting back up to the top of the range then i mean you guys know uh what i've been telling you i mean you know th this kind of pattern is is uh you know i mean it's consolidation within an uptrend so 
you know, we're not moving down, we're not moving up. Uh, it's quite neutral, uh, but neutral within a bull market, you've seen me type this already, neutral in a bull market uh, is always going to default to being bullish in my books uh, because we're looking at everything with rose tinted glasses. So, uh, you know, obviously maybe not right now with retail just starting to lose their mind a little bit, but, um, you know, I think overall, uh, you know, that is kind of what we're seeing. And so, um, yeah, you know, if, if we kind of, you know, manage to, you know, get above this midpoint at 30.6 and just kind of flip some of these very micro levels, I'm not going to go into them because, you know, that, that's not the kind of analysis I do. That's way too short term. But, you know, if we do start flipping them, then that would be huge progress to indicate, you know, quite a lot of things. It would also indicate to us that this four hour Ichimoku cloud is working. You know, if we can get above kind of 30.4, then that's a confirmed test of the cloud. And by the way, I mean, you know, we've made really good use of it back here. So, uh, you know, and it was quite similar circumstances. We pumped up beautifully, kind of corrected. Yeah, I mean, it was more of a price drop than what we're seeing right now. Not substantially more, though. This was minus 8%. Uh, and this was minus 6%. So not substantially more, but it was a slightly larger correction price wise, um, you know, but we dropped into this range and, you know, just consistently finding support off the Ichimoku cloud. So, you know, it's the same indicator that we already knew uh, was potentially going to be useful. And we are starting to potentially use it again right now. Now, one of the things that I have found really interesting about this market is what's happening in, uh, in the altcoin space. If we look at Bitcoin's dominance, it has been very steadily gaining more ground here, getting back up towards those highs that it set um, towards the end of June. We can actually see this with the Ethereum chart too. I was pointing out this head and shoulders pattern to uh, VIP members and, uh, and and the price did end up collapsing uh, afterwards. So uh, that word of warning definitely did pay off. Uh, I was in uh, an Ethereum short, I'm sorry, an Ethereum long, and I did lose a small amount of capital. So, um, you know, you win some, you lose some, right? I'm completely okay with that. Uh, the losers are, uh, are, 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 you know, the only way that you can get to the winners, right? You're going to stumble a little bit before you absolutely just jump the uh, jump the fuck out of the arena uh, strap your jetpack to your back and you end up in the kind of long trade i'm in with bitcoin um yeah you know there's going to be a few losers on the way so i have no problem with that whatsoever uh you know i mean it's all about that mindset really if you don't have that you're going to have a lot of trouble um and by the way you know I, I should say it's a lot easier to have that mindset when you've done it for a long time you know when you've already made a lot of money when you've already kind of um you know like right now for example i'm in a huge bitcoin profit you know with, with my long position so you know, if I take like, you know, 5% of that profit, if I lose it, you know, with, because I lost some money on an Ethereum trade, for example, um, it's really not the end of the world for me. It can't, you know, like that's just profit that I didn't get, you know, that, that that's the way I'm seeing it. Um, you know, and, and the reason that that's such a good place to be is um, I'm not scared to take more risks. You know, I'm not scared to uh, I, I'm, I'm a little worried. That, that's the thing, right? I mean, a lot of people get into this trap where they start getting really worried and start overthinking stuff when they lose money. But if you've got that more kind of winner's mentality, um, you know, which again is, is a lot easier to have if you've already been there, uh, then uh, then you're going to be okay. You know, and this is why the VIP experience has been so, so valuable for so many people because, uh, you know, you might not have had that yet, but you can see how traders who have had that are navigating the market. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm right. That doesn't mean I'm going to be making money all the time. Uh, but it certainly means that uh, I feel I have a very sound headspace as a trader, uh, you know, and, uh, and and if you want to, you know, kind of see how that looks in real time, how I'm actually navigating these markets, then these steps on screen uh, will take you in there. And of course, uh, while you are down there in the description, I do want to stress again, the beautiful offers available to you uh, with the links down here, uh, OKX, as well as the other one that I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to be highlighting to you because they are giving you up to sixty thousand dollars in rewards which is absolutely crazy this is the biggest uh you know set of rewards i've ever seen on an exchange uh which are well well worth checking out you only have to deposit fifty dollars by the way to receive the mystery boxes that will give you these rewards so um you know i mean just just huge 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 offer uh you know very easy to access as well so well worth checking that out as well uh, and of course the top two being uh you know one of the you know some of the best offers in the space you know bing x they don't have a big bonus for you but who the fuck cares you can trade all of these other markets you know just with bitcoin it, it, it's crazy and they've got the privacy focus too without requiring kyc so 
that's very very cool um you know back to the altcoins i mean look overall we're seeing some uh you know kind of sunshine here so uh, that doesn't really make sense considering that bitcoin's dominance has been rising but um you know i think this is just one of those things where you know when people do start getting a little bit more scared and by the way this is what's confusing because we're getting more longs here but people seem more scared i don't really understand that uh this data might not be up to date you know we might have to wait for tomorrow um but um you know we, we are we are seeing you know the, the classic signs of people kind of tightening up and getting a bit more worried because uh you know they're they're closing up their short positions and going back into bitcoin and you know that happens when you're looking for safety right i mean if you're in bitcoin and you know bitcoin crashes down to three thousand dollars tomorrow you're probably going to go into the dollar because you're going to look for safety um and that's exactly what altcoin traders do when they move back into bitcoin and that explains this bitcoin dominance chart starting to rise back up as well so um you know one of the key things that i'm going to continue to watch is traditional finance um the picture hasn't changed here it's still looking pretty good to me uh this market will be opening uh, probably around about the time you're watching this video um so that's going to be pretty fun and interesting to watch and uh you know i mean the dollar is in a pretty good place too so you know I, i've got a good amount of you know reason to, to stay bullish to be honest i'm not actually seeing anything changing here but um you know sentiments just constantly fucking like this all over the space so um you know when that happens obviously that just tells me that uh, a lot of really nice opportunities are opening up so that's me that's what i'm saying from my experience if you have enjoyed this one ladies and gents you know exactly what to do do me a massive favor and smash up those likes on this youtube video double check that you subscribe tick the bell and all that good stuff i do have uh one of my favorite microphones back now uh, I don't know if it's as good as uh, the microphone that I usually use with you guys, um, but it's pretty good, and uh, and I don't think there's going to be any complaints, so I do want to give you a quick apology about the poor audio over the last few days. Uh, I just wasn't very organized, but now uh, things should be a little bit closer to normal. So there you go. I really hope you have enjoyed it. You know exactly what to do, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.